Hi, everybody. I feel like we should have brought water for everybody who was dancing before. I wasn't really dancing, but I was chatting, so I'm a little parched. Um, we are starting a little bit late, but I promise we are going to be done by 8 o'clock, even if I have to be an auctioneer tonight. Um, we did say that this was going to be a little bit of an administrative meeting, just because we know that there's a lot of kids in there who are probably tired and maybe need something healthier than friendships to eat before they go to bed. Um, the, uh, have you found these? the notes from the minutes, thank you, from the last meeting should be at your table if everyone can left with them and let me know if there are any updates or corrections that need to be made. If not, then I need a motion to approve and second. I think that if parents are getting our weekly newsletters, we put everything in the newsletters, everything that's happening at the school. So hopefully everyone is getting that information. The one thing that we um, coming up next week, we were just we're gonna be recognized by the Maryland State Board of Education for receiving the Excellence in Gifted Education Award. Um, we were notified in the end of January or in January. And so um, the team will be going to an award ceremony on February 11th. But just that we had to turn in a portfolio of just the things that we do here at school. We were able to compile the information and we um, receive points in all the categories. And so it's 17 schools in the state of Maryland that have the recognition and we're one of those Um, February 14th, I don't know if you all will probably get that information about our second quarter honor roll. Um, we're always looking to see what we can do different for honor roll than the standard assembly. The last time we had, um, what was it called? What? what was the last time for honor roll? No, not the sock hop. It was something else that we did. It was like the trail mix. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Trust success. success. That's what it was. I couldn't think of that. She's in there working, but I thought she was working. Trust and success. So we're always looking for different things that we can do to recognize our honor roll students. Um, but we, we're going to do the assembly again this second quarter. And we just did a save the date, which should be coming out to you all if you haven't already received it. So we're looking at February 14th for that. Um, I sent out letters to third and fifth grade parents. We had a couple staff changes. This is one of my new teachers here, Ms. Howe. I'm happy to see her here tonight. Uh, Ms. 
Pal, um, just graduated from Salisbury University um, with a dual degree in early childhood and, and elementary education. She actually did her student teaching in kindergarten and fifth grade. I'm like, kindergarten and fifth grade? Okay. I said, well, did you have a, did you like one better than the other? And she said she didn't. She said she liked both of them. And so we had a teacher, Ms. McCargo, who was here, who was having some family hardships and um, needed to leave. And so we were very, very fortunate to be able to find Ms. Um, Howe to come in. And it's been a great transition. We are... Um, when did you start? Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, last Tuesday. Oh so, <laughs> so yeah, so she started last Tuesday. She did have the opportunity because she graduated in December. She um, just came to the school probably the first um, after we came back from winter break, and so she had an opportunity to really transition and work with Ms. McCargo so we could keep things in place and make it as a smooth transition as possible. And so Ms. Howe is our new fifth grade teacher. And then if most of you all know, Mr. Richardson received a promotion to an academic facilitator at Imagine Leland Charter School in Prince George's County. And so I hired Ms. Wallace, my third grade teacher, as my new instructional lead teacher. And so I had to find a third grade teacher. And we were fortunate once again to find a um, teacher who just graduated in December from Bowie State University. Um, and her degree is in elementary education. She's duly certified in elementary education and special education. So we were very fortunate because there are schools throughout the district, throughout the state, throughout the nation, because there's a shortage of teachers um, that have had vacancies all school year. So they want to know how I do it. I can't tell them my <laughs> secret, but we are really happy to get two certified teachers who are very eager, excited, and it's been a very smooth transition for both of them. What was the name um, of the third grade teacher? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What was the name of the third grade teacher? Miss Trent. Trent. C R E N T. Miss Trent. And so Miss Wallet. So Miss Trent and Miss Howe both started on January 21st. And um, Ms. Wallace transitioned to her new position as the instructional lead teacher. So staff change is happening, and we're excited about that. Um, but the year is just going by fast, that's all I can say. I was at a meeting today um, outside of school where we're starting to um, just get ready for state testing that's coming up. Um, they did push the window back a little bit, so it's going to be starting around mid-April, um, but just getting information about what we need to do to get our kids prepared. Um, you know, we don't teach for a test, but at the same time, we know that there are certain things that kids can do so that they can do better. One thing we're very fortunate to have Ms. Holston um, working with the kids on the computers every other week because everything is on a computer now. So just how to drag and drop things and how to navigate through pages and read and how to highlight and all of those tools are things that we're working on with the students in addition to the curricular things. But things are going well. Yes. I have a question. I'd like to, what's the computer testing? Are they using a mouse or are they using a so it just depends on which device they use. Um, some of the Mac um, Mac devices, they do not use a mouse. Um, some of the um, Chromebooks, they can attach a mouse to it. Yes. Curious, if you're using it at home, what would be good? Mm -hmm. I was also wondering if the construction that's happening near the black top. Right, so that's the storm drain project that we're having. And so um, they just had to bring all the construction down um, I think they talked to Ms. Stag. She mentioned it like about a week ago, and it's going to be there for six to eight weeks for them to complete the project. Yeah. Is that supposed to help the playground? Or? No, that has nothing to do with the playground. Though. Everyone asked that. No. It's a long answer. It has nothing to do with the um, playground because it's actually over, um, like as you're going down the um, sidewalk there. So not the playground there. The kids are like, oh, are you building us a pool? Well, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> Will it be bigger when they're done? Is, will the surface space be bigger or not? So I don't think that the surface space would be bigger. They, didn't, they did not say that. Um, which said, that's the only information she gave. She met with them just last week. I wasn't there. I was at another meeting, but she met with them. But she did tell me about the timeline for the things on the blacktop. 
I was just going to have this left for recess. Because I know my daughter hasn't been outside since the construction started, and my son has, and I wasn't sure if different teachers were given different directives and different grades. Yeah, no one was given anything, did one. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just email the teacher. Oh, I think Luca had one and Eric as well. So uh, I have a question about the Russian teacher. Mm -hmm. um, Miss Sanders, sorry. Um, is she out for a final period of time or? So she won't leave. That's the information I have. She won't take leave right now. Oh. And I got the saying that the question has been dropped back to just part. Yeah, and so when teachers don't want to leave, we try to get substitute teachers. We struggle struggle getting substitute teachers it's even more difficult to get a substitute teacher in russian um we were fortunate that miss sloniker's husband had taken russian in middle school <laughs> and remembered a few things and um he was studying for us for i guess the last couple of weeks um and he's only available up until like two more weeks he's available and so we had to make a decision not knowing when teachers are on um, extended sick leave, sometimes it goes beyond the time period. So um, I had to make a decision about, okay, so what are we gonna do? We cannot, um, we cannot find substitutes for classroom teachers, let alone a Russian teacher. And so what we didn't want was students just to be just out of, out of instructional time. Because the thing about the Russian program, it eats into our instructional time. Um, you know, we are a comprehensive elementary school. Um, there are mandates of time for each subject area. We're probably one of the few schools that have a world language program. It's not required. And so um, we thought that, okay, if we can't get a substitute that's going to provide quality instruction. We're going to need to revamp it so that the two teachers can provide the Russian instruction. And so we didn't think that it would be fair for, um, you know, Ms. Sanders um, students just to come in and watch a Russian video we don't know what it's about, or just to do some worksheets. And so we revamped it, and the two teachers are now going to see all of the classes, but it did decrease the um, number of times that they have Russian each week. How long is that going to be? I don't have an answer to that until I find out the status of the teacher. So it's kind of back to how they used to have it. Mm -hmm. Would be mm -hmm. three teachers. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Every, every day. day. Mm -hmm. Almost every day. I've had meetings, you know, here and there, but if you have any questions, you can ask me anytime. Thank you, Dr. Dan. Um, so I don't really have a president's report because the things that I need to talk about are further down on the agenda. But the one thing that I did want to bring up is Mr. Naji, our beloved art teacher, his mother passed away. And so we thought we would send, we'll pass this around so you guys can put some notes on it and we'll give it to him from the PTA. Yes. <laughs> All right, Anil, I will turn it over to you for the treasurer's report. There should be on all of the tables the treasurer's report of our financial standing. Does everyone have this? I will, just before Anil gets started, I will say kind of foreshadowing next month is when we. Do you need one? Yeah, yeah. Um, next month at our meeting, one of the things that we will be doing is presenting our proposed budget for the next school year, just as a first draft. So I think it is good to kind of glance at these numbers. And one of the things that I will ask you is that, I mean, we'll have a chance to talk about it next month as well. But if you have suggestions or feedback that you would like to give us, please feel free to reach out to myself, Anil, Gail, Jessica, um, or Nick as well in addition to being able to talk about it next week. Over to you. All right, hello everyone. Um, I think first of all, I want to apologize. We missed the treasurer's report last meeting. So I was out traveling and could not get it up to everyone. He was in India. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, and secondly, so in this report, you'll find some expenses, like like childcare expense for the last two meetings. And 
solved, sort of consolidated since the last meeting, uh, since the last meeting in October. You guys had one in the sample. This is all consolidated since October. Um, so current balances as of today, total of 26,556, still with the ETI. Uh, incomes, memberships seems to have dropped quite a bit. I did receive a couple, at least four, uh, net today at this meeting. But we certainly want to encourage everyone, uh, and not just you, but anyone else you know, uh, have kids at the school uh, to uh, send in their memberships. Um, Ralph Idol's rates was still continuing in early October when we had this meeting. So a total of Raphael's race proceeds were like 2,380. Um, box tops came in, $299. That was pretty, pretty good. This one, good shot, uh, that sent a check for $15. Um, but the big one here is Silver Diner. I think you have made some efforts to follow up with them. And we had a good chunk of money coming in from Silver Diner as part of their health and wellness program. That was six hundred thirty-one dollars. That was from our restaurant rate that we had. And of course, we were the winners at the Green Bad Labor Day Festival Parade again. So we got two hundred dollars for that. <laughs> second difference. I feel like Ingrid's won every year. Have every, every year. Every year that you've but done it's not always two hundred. It's okay. Like, sometimes it's 50, sometimes it's 100. Okay. So it was two yeah. years in about $200. <laughs> That's pretty bad, right? But Mr. said it, our CEO said she was heels like a winner. So that's the important exactly. thing. <laughs> so we took in about $3,646.61 since October. Our expenses, of course, were higher, total of $8,490. And the uh, majority of these are the the, the GES school support, that's a total of uh, $5,000 in a year. So both of those came in on this one, plus the general school support, um, that totals up to almost $5,000. Uh, expenses, uh, we only had one reimbursement on the files race, so anyone has any expenses, I'm not paid this half year, we're not enough here, but anyone who has any expenses for uh, the files race, Please do send in the reimbursements. We did reimburse one for $401. Agenda books, uh, that was another one uh, where we had some uh, balanced pay, and then, of course, um, there were some funds that were to be put into the school's fund because they were late in delivering agenda books to us and not to the school. So and Stag negotiated a right. 50% discount in the cost of the agenda books because they were six weeks late or something mm -hmm. like that. Right. Um, so we gave the balance to, to Dr. Gaines and Ms. Stag to, um, yeah, to reprogram. Uh, Rafael's raise uh, profits out of that field trips that are funded. So we issued another check for 17.72.15 on that. Uh, the net proceeds on Rafael's race seems seem to be a bit lower than last year. So obviously the profits were then re reduced from here. Uh, the other contribution that goes out of the Rafael's race profits is the Camp Sunshine contribution. So that also we, we, decided, we have decided to spend only $100 instead of $200 that we spent last year. Other than that, few reimbursements, and that's about it for the treasurer support. Any questions? So when you say GS school support one and school support two, what is that exactly? It's basically two transactions. We we pay school support in two different transactions. One goes out somewhere sometime in October time frame, and the other one goes out in more like February time frame. So we just sent the second uh, transaction over. So that's part of the budget, and we give it kind of to the school in two tranches. And actually, the second tranche, my husband's bringing the check because I forgot it on mm -hmm. my desk. <laughs> Is that anybody coming from Amazon? From the, 
There used to be Amazon Smile contributions. Used to come in. I looked at the report uh, where, where those come in and did not find any more recent entries since October. So that's why they're not here. They were on the last. Uh, I mean, if you happen to see the October the name report. Change. The name oh, change. Yeah. Yeah. The school, mm -hmm. like Mallers, or it was something very. It did choose. So I don't know if somebody. If that had any effect on it. We can check yeah. that out. I don't know. It was something else. Like, it was a weird thing. I don't even know where. Like, I don't even know who had access to that. I think it has been like a year since we looked into this, so we'll have to double check. Yeah, you're right. There was something about the name changing because it was called, called like Greenbelt Center School or something before. That's I, the I, name with the IRS. Oh. But now on, yeah. On the, I was just the reason I looked for it. Yeah. It was, it's now like Greenbelt Elementary. That's right. The account didn't change yeah. though, but we can try to find an answer to that. Remembering that now because we were when we were like reconciling when we took over yeah. in our position, we were like, Where is this money coming from? What is this Green Belt Center? And we realized it was just insane. Yeah, the other thing that I wanted to bring up, which we, we have to I have to talk to Lena, who kind of spearheaded well, she did kind of she spearheaded the restaurant nights that we did at the Silver Diner. So there's kind of two funding streams coming from Silver Diner. One is the restaurant night, which was crazy successful. I mean, I saw, I was sitting by the window and people couldn't even get in. They were like walking away. So I think we'll definitely do another one in the spring. But there's also the eat, eat well, do, do well, live well cards, where if you go there, we get a percentage back. And we, Lena, when, when she had set, gone to set that up, there was like a $700 check just sitting there from years and years of us having no idea. We always that take our connected. card and give it to them and think, well, so we have angry to thank for that. <laughs> but one of the things that we're thinking of is Dr. Gaines is apparently required, there's the school lunch account where, you know, not everyone in our school can keep up to date on their school lunch accounts. And so Dr. Gaines is required to put some money in there. And so what we're, I mean, I'm kind of bringing it up now, you guys can think about it, but we're gonna propose this for next year, is that from that Eat Well, Do Well card, because the money from Silver Diner is supposed to go towards sort of health and wellness type things. But we were like, gosh, if kids in our school can't eat, could we just be putting that money directly into that account and it gets however big it gets, in addition to whatever else we might put in there, but it feels like that would be a logical place. But Lena has to check because we're not, it's like a check, like it's not like it's an automatic deduction, so she needs to figure out like how often we have to go there and all of that kind of stuff. So we, we will follow up on that, on that stuff. Thank you. Great. Thank you. All right. Ingrid, over to you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I have several things to report. First of all, we had a little scare with the mosaic outside. Um, I don't know Seriously? if you can look at it when closely, but some of the scenes were looking like they were kind of hacking, and um, we noticed that there was a tile missing, and we just we called the artist, to make a long story short, and said, help. <laughs> And she determined that actually it's okay. The green bricks on the outside of the building, some of them stick out a little bit. So the mural is made up of 16 concrete, what are they called, boards, right? And it was seen together to make the final image. So um, one of those is up a little bit, and, but it's not, not an attached corner. And they said that's going to be fine, but the, the seam underneath it will occasionally need to be regrouted. And they are going to do that this spring once the weather warms up a little bit. Uh, it shouldn't be a big problem. They're going to tell me how to do it, so I'll probably end up checking on that and doing that occasionally. <laughs> but it's good news. There's no big problem with it. Um, and we are also working on the mosaic project with Mr. Naji. We've got an ACE grant for that and the PTA is helping support that a little bit with, with supplies. So uh, that's been going really well, even though he was missing. We got a lot done on the report, uh, on the 
they're like pavers. We're going to make a pathway in the front and uh, in the gardens, cheer up the front even more. So um, we might need help grouting later or installing when it gets to be warm, like flattening the earth and putting sand and gravel in. So if anyone is interested in that, let me know, because I'll be spearheading that. Um, it's going to be great. They're really sweet. It was in the news review. Right? I know. Those were the pictures. Did you, yeah. 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 Did did you see the article? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, let's see. So really fast, the, uh, the normal projects are all coming up. So we're going to have um, the third grade art and garden journal project, even though we have a brand new third grade teacher. Um, it's going to work out. I'm meeting with them and getting them up to speed, and they're interested in doing it, so it looks good. Um, and Sarah Garcia will be doing that. Um, she's a local uh, artist. And the second grade dance project looks like it's coming together with a light dance again. That's a really popular project with the second graders. Um, she comes in like three or four times, and they dance the plants growing and sprouting and all that. And then um, animation with George Cochelle is on the books for May, I think. And Butterfly Wonder for first grade is still going to happen. So I think that's all. If anyone is interested in weeding or stapling journals or any little something like that, just talk to me. I always have little jobs for people. Thank you. Thank you, Ingrid. Okay. Yeah. 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 This time. Yeah. It's the same prop as last time. Do you want me to hold it for you? Yeah. Okay, so this is teacher appreciation. <laughs> um, so we do a couple things this year. We do breakfast. Those two have happened. This is an old poster. This is from, I don't know, September or something. Um, so we had a breakfast in August when the teachers first came back, and then we had a breakfast the last day of school in December. That was great. Thank you all for the helps that was a big success i think we kind of got a rhythm down now of how to make it work not too terribly um teacher and staff appreciation week is the first week in may so that's our big push um there are a couple things that happen in that week just for review um the biggest thing is that we provide a meal almost every day last year it was four out of five days um from donated supplies either restaurants or gift cards, we got a Costco gift card from an apartment building, that kind of thing. So we provide me a, either breakfast or lunch every day. We also provide gift cards. So each staff member gets a $20 gift card, um, and those are donated by parents and um, businesses, local businesses. And then last year, there was also um, a massage and acupuncture studio or whatever you call it, that, that place that came and donated their time. So it was a little bit difficult to coordinate that because they were here for, I think, two four-hour chunks, and there were a bunch of teachers that wanted to do it, but you have to figure out. They didn't have time to do all of the teachers that wanted to, and then the teachers weren't all free during all of those times, so it took a lot of, like, some leaving things together. So, here's what I need from you. <laughs> um, Eric has volunteered to be the coordinator for the um, gift cards, so if you feel like you're inspired to help on that front, talk to Eric. Um, I could really use somebody to coordinate that acupuncture and massage situation. Um, Shirley did it last year and it, it worked well that she was available during the school day to like meet the person, help them set up the room, draw teacher names, whatever. So um, if you're available during the day, even some, some days, not even necessarily every day, that would be a good position for you. Um, I think it was not a lot of work ahead of time. It was that was mostly work like the days of, and that's heavenly well. You that's familiar with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and the teachers loved that. That's what I heard. That was like a huge success. Um, and then the big thing is soliciting donations. So um, Shirley, who's done this the last three years, has this list of places that she has contacted in the past and have either donated something or not donated something. But she has this master list and a sample letter, so a template that you can send out, contact names, all that kind of stuff. I have a list here tonight of places that we have used in the past. Um, what I could really help, what I could use is somebody to coordinate with, with each of these businesses. So if you have time, even a little bit of time, it doesn't have to be during the school day or during the work week, um, 
sign up for a business or two or three. I'll read them out so the people there can hear. The ones that we've, we've used last year were um, Wawa's, for example, gave us 300 individual iced tea bottles. That was great. Um, Buffalo Wild Wings gives us food. The Lakeside North Apartments always gives us a big gift card for Costco. Um, Three Brothers Pizza Silver Diner. We didn't use them last year, but we've used them in years past. They've done the breakfast thing. Um, Jimmy John's gave us um, sandwiches. Um, Beltway Plaza usually gives us a check to just use. I think we used that last year to buy the chips that went with the sandwiches from Jimmy John's or something like that. Um, let's see. The co-op usually gives us some gift cards um, to put in the mix. There are some places, local businesses, that I thought we could ask that we haven't in before, like Cedars of Lebanon, um, let's see, Mission Barbecue. Um, I know Chipotle, we did a restaurant night with Chipotle. Um, I'm not sure if we coordinated that last year, but if that was you and you want to like approach them again, that'd be great. Um, Gus's Fried Chicken down the road, that's new. So let's fill this out. So, Ellie, the ask is if you take a, um, a uh, restaurant, give you information, sort of like talking points for what we're asking for. I think we have letters. Yep, we have a letters. letter. We have a copy of our tax exempt certificate. We have people that we've talked to before at that business. Um, I, it, I haven't done this before. <laughs> this is a brand new world for me. But from what I understand from Shirley, the biggest um, time sink is just recontacting people. So often it'll sort of fall off their radar or the person you talked to will be out when you call next. So it takes a lot of iterations of just a quick phone call and then a voicemail and then a week later follow up with an email and then a week later another phone call. So it's not aggregated, it's not a big time sink, but it's a lot of like sort of checking back in. Um, closer to the event, we'll figure out what businesses are donating and when and then we make a schedule. So some businesses only want to do it on a Tuesday, or they only want to do lunch, or we can coordinate all that later on when we get them all together. Um, great. And then, finally, I need people to actually be here for the meals. So we can sign up for that if that's more your cup of tea, if you don't like asking for stuff, but you're happy to be here for an hour or two, either a breakfast or lunch, pull off and I'll send out another sign-up sheet for that later on. Okay, so come see me afterwards. And I will say that even though this is in May, this we need to kind of start planning and get some hands on deck for this and i i mean may seems like far away but trust me i'm not a teacher but maybe Ms. Orsito or dr Gaines or you could attest come may i think the teachers need the boost of of us showing us how much we appreciate them and i <laughs> and i do i have heard from other parents that they actually love coming and serving the teachers and hanging out in the teacher lounge because it's a great way the teachers kind of have their game face off back there and they're more like you know people people and so it's nice to spend time with them and for them to get to know you so if you if you do have time this is a great way to get involved and in the teachers yeah. yeah, I would just also say really quickly that if anyone, if you want to spread the word to your friends and neighbors, if they have a business that they know of or are involved with and might be willing to sponsor a meal, because what I'm hearing are we're going to a lot of the same local, sometimes small businesses. So things like going to Cedars of Lebanon sounds like a really good idea. People are very, very small restaurant. I don't want to necessarily take their resources to be our staff, but rather look at businesses. So if you can think kind of wider, corporate, you're thinking yeah, corporate, yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly right. Yeah, yep. But you can have Yes, exactly. Yep, yep. And people you can actually. Speak to. Yeah, and some places, I think we got something from Whiteman last year, like a twenty-five dollar gift card. But it was something because they have a web page and you go fill it out. Someone took the time to go fill it out and then it got mailed to them. So. And I think one thing that we'll probably do again this year that worked really well last year, Miss Tag actually was great about taking pictures. I think Shirley and Mistake took pictures, and then she, Mistake, tweeted them out, and then Allison Gary, who does our social media, she was also putting it out. So it's it's also a way for us to thank those businesses publicly, um, yeah. yeah, which we obviously will do. But. Cool. Great, thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. So I put this in as old business business old business because I had brought this up at the last meeting and it actually came up last year, but I think Amy was somewhat involved in this last year. 
But there is a walk called the Hug Walk um, that a local community member sponsored and started last year. And Hug stands for Help Unite Green Belt. And it's this fantastic thing where basically it's just a walk of community members. This year it's starting in Greenbelt Station, um, walking to Spring Hill Lake, Buddy Attic, Roosevelt Center, Greenbrier, Green Briar, Windsor Green, and ending at Schramm Hills Park. And it was the first year last year, and he came to us a little bit late, and we couldn't really quite mobilize to figure out what to do other than to help promote it, which we as the PTA will do again. But this year, um, he had set the date a little bit earlier. It's March 29th. Um, it's at 1 p.m. And I feel like there was a pretty decent turnout for it last year. And this year, there's one thing that I wanted to bring up to you all, which I think could be a good opportunity for us as a school and a PTA, is that um, at the end at Shrum Hills Park, um, local businesses or schools or things like that have the opportunity to set up a table. And I think one of the things we as a PTA have always wanted to do is try and diversify our um, membership of the people who know about us and who participate in the work that we do. And having a booth and having a presence at a place like this or at a, uh, an event like this could be a way because it's basically pulling people from all of Greenbelt to it. And in addition to that, one of the things that they're doing is they're collecting um, cans for the Greenbelt food pantry. I don't know if I'm correcting saying the right word. But I was like, wow, our, one of the things I was thinking about is maybe we could work with the Student Government Association who's done a couple of can drives. And I don't know what you guys think. It is at the end of March. So we have one more meeting before it. But I don't know if you guys would be game for having a booth. Um, I think I'm in town that weekend, so I could you know, stand there for a little bit. But I wanted to see what you guys thought both of the booth, as well as if we thought we could reach out to maybe some, I don't know which teachers are doing the student government this year, but if it's something we wanted to do yeah, with them. Our great teachers, Ms. Perry and Ms. Peter. Oh, Ms. Perry and Ms. Peter. Mm -hmm. okay. So I don't know, what do you guys think? Because I love it. A great idea. Good. Yeah. 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 I wasn't doing well last year, but I had surgery, so good to go. We didn't want to scoot around. No. Amy, it had a pretty good. I think there were. It was a turnout. A good turnout, right? Yeah, it was. It was decent. Okay. I would almost love to partner with other schools so we can all have like join the PTA, and anybody who comes to the booth can be like. Oh, I'm from Magnolia. How can I sign up? I'm from Greenville Middle. And that way, it's not like we're fighting for people. That's a great idea. We at the, um, what was that called? The summer that we always do? Night Out. The National Night Out. We share a space with the Greenville Middle School PTA. So maybe we could do, yeah. So that would be what? Spring Hill Lake, mm -hmm. Magnolia, mm -hmm. Greenville in the Middle. Roosevelt. Roosevelt. Oh, yes. Yeah. They, they have, have a student, student teacher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dorothy. Yeah, Dorothy. Okay. Great idea. Well, if you have any other thoughts, um, I will send. Um, I will send him an email. I've already told him that we're happy to kind of spread the word on this. I can email the PTA presidents. I don't, does any, do you have a contact for Roosevelt, Gail? Uh, I can look it up. I, notes, I, might. I definitely know someone who heard. <laughs> OK, I can look it up. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> and then I do have the flyer for it. I'll send it. We can send this out just as a bare minimum, send it out through the listserv to try and let people know to kind of save the date for that as well. All right. Um, Net new business. Okay, so these are two big things. So we only actually have two more PTA meetings left, which seems kind of crazy this year is flying by. We need, we officially need a nominations committee. Um, those of us who are on the board this year have served two terms, so we're booted out, at least in our positions. I guess technically we could go into other positions. Um, but we need an official nominations committee. Erin Markovich has agreed to be sort of the chair of that nominations committee. 
Um, but I do need two people who would be willing to serve on that committee. And really what it is, is this is what the PTA does, this is what the positions are, and we have everything written up for you all. But to, just to be another um, uh, point of contact for people who might be interested in serving on the board. Um, they can obviously reach, anyone could reach out to us as well, but this is the official thing that we need to do through our bylaws. So we need two people to help with that. Does um, have a servant? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> it does mean if you think you might be interested in serving on the board next year, you can't be on the nomination. <laughs> okay, awesome. Um, I will have Aaron. Yes, yes. yes. Um, I will have Aaron reach out. Um, last year, I think one person sort of posted a like. A coffee or it was an evening event. Um, you don't have to do that this year. It could, you know, we could host something. Thank you. So we need sort of one who can kind of come and ask questions, but it's also we'll send this out through the listserv, we'll post it on Facebook. And it's basically you can contact these people if you're interested. And then the second thing we need is people who want to do this next year. <laughs> and Karina walked in. I she's she's, 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 she's so volunteering to do everything yeah. next year. Right, right. <laughs> so we do. Karina, Karina's not on the committee. volunteering for us. Now have to fight between Kristen and I don't know how to do it. No, Kristen is good. Well, so then, Kristen, you can be nominated for no. position. In all seriousness, though, we do need to come up with a slate of officers for next year. It's two vice presidents, a secretary, and a treasurer. So there's five people. And many hands make light work if you spread that out. It's not that big of an ask. Um, I think for the officer positions, it is ideal if you're able to come in person to the meetings, which, you know, honestly, if that is the only thing precluding you from saying you're interested in serving on the board, I'm positive we can figure something out. But it is a little bit easier because part of our roles is, you know, being available to talk to people, answer questions and things like that. But I don't want there to be any barriers. <laughs> we need to put the slate out by April. Um, because we have to put the slate out a month before we vote, and we vote at our May meeting. So it's February. We'll start pinging people, reaching out to people that we know. If you are not interested, but you're like, oh, my friend so-and-so might be interested in this, please put them in contact with us. We're happy to chat. We will also post kind of the job descriptions, for lack of a better term, sort of what it, what it entails. Um, so yeah, I'm not asking for nominations right now, but I will hang out for a few minutes afterwards if you're interested. Um, you don't have to have prior PT experience, although it's helpful if you have some under inner workings of this. The treasurer position, I think it's helpful if you have some sort of basic understanding of accounting and things like that, or at least are very comfortable with that. But um, I mean, this is entirely volunteer and parent-led, which is all of what Dr. Davis can do it. Yeah, so that is that, just my plea to think about it. Um, technically, you can nominate people without their knowledge. <laughs> I think I would encourage against that or discourage that. I don't think we should do that, so don't throw baby. <laughs> So I think that is it um, for that. We do have a couple of upcoming dates on here. Erin um, Thomas has been great. She scheduled, actually the poor girl, she had scheduled a Frank, Frank and we're like, that's bad timing. Can you re reschedule that? So it's rescheduled. One of the kind of cool things about Franklin's, and if you don't know where that's at, it's in Hyattsville, just down Route 1. Kind of where like all the restaurants are over there and they have you know it's a very family friendly place um and it's all sales including the 
Get Toy a store. Yeah. 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 So that all counts towards um, money that comes back to the model. Yeah. You have to tell them. You have to tell them. The nice yeah. thing about Silver Diner was that you didn't have to. It was like anybody, everybody, everybody, whatever. But Franklin's, I don't, I often like to get back to the car with the receipt in my hand. Like, the receipt to like the receptionist person, she puts it in front of us. So we yeah. have to not do that. So we'll remind folks of that, but that's, you can just mark your calendars. And then I did put the hug walk on here on the 29th. Um, the only thing I did not put on here is our next PTA meeting, uh, which is March, the first Tuesday in March. Sorry. March 3rd. March 3rd. Yeah. Any spring fair thing? So spring fair date, we are working on that. I need to send a note to Amy and I are going to talk. I think we have maybe convinced somebody to be the Spring Fair chair. Uh, so we're going to be talking after the meeting and we will send out information on that. Yeah. I found the answer about the Amazon Smile, okay. if anyone's interested. They, they um, send out our deposits quarterly. So our, our next one is coming this month in February. It's for $8.52. There has only ever been 21 people to support the PTA with Smile Amazon. So okay. I think we need to try to publicize that a little can, bit yeah. more. Yeah. Sure, we can do that. We'll try not to submit the dollars all in one spot. Maybe for Kristen and, and yeah. So the Amazon Smile, it's like you can donate if. If you're, buying, if you're buying, if you're shopping on a computer, you would go to smile.amazon.com and like the first time you do that, it'll prompt you for who you want to donate to. And the, our name now is Greenbelt Elementary School PTA. It used to be more confusing to find who it was, but the name changed. No other part of that changed. Um, and it is possible to do it on the app on your phone, but it's more hidden. But do you have to choose an amount? No, so you don't you don't choose an amount. They donate a certain amount of every purchase you make. So just shopping with smile.amazon okay. will do it. Is that something that we can have like on the anybody okay. can so do that? Yeah. That's a good idea. But I mean like I don't think about it, but if I buy it, let me put this Oh. There's there's an extension that you can get for Chrome and Firefox, it will automatically send you to the Smile um, website if you go to Amazon. Yeah, like redirect it'll you. redirect you right to Smile. Mm -hmm. so you can set that so you don't have to think about it if you're on your computer. So your suggestion was to put something about it on the PTA website? Yes. I did it. I just did it. Okay. The, yeah, there's a link on there now. Yeah. It can also be in the signature of when you send out your email to the listener. So right. So I, I put it. I put it in the signature for our email, the the official PTA email. But it, depending on who sends out the lists or things, yeah, there's a link for it. Okay. I have a. I guess it's a new business, but it's probably Dr. Gates' email, and he'll be able to answer it. Um, since our next meeting is it's March, right? So that's just a month away, mm -hmm. and probably nothing will be different by then. But by May, there could be. I was wondering if you have got any information from the county about if there was a disease outbreak that spread around here, does the county have a plan in place for, I mean, not shutting down schools, but I know that like hand washing policy, you're supposed to wash your hands before all your meals, before other things like that. When I talk to my kids, you know, they come from recess into um, the cafeteria and they don't get a chance to wash their hands. So I didn't know if there was something like, if, if you have any plans from up above that, you know, if something happens, then we go to, you know, plan D or whatever, and all of a sudden everybody gets hand sanitizer or whatever. All right, and so, you know, there hasn't been anything communicated um, with SAC about, and the nurse will give us information about, you know, the flu box, bathroom, they have the hand sanitizer dispensers in the cafeteria so that the kids can use them in there. Okay. But there hasn't been anything else communicated. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I obviously it doesn't know about the hand sanitizer in the cafeteria. So no, I can't well, right, if you need to say that one, it's right there as you're walking into the lunch line. Yeah. Yeah. I'll talk to that. The letters on the bill on the board out there that said okay, so there's the letter board that says greyhounds and like with the and stuff underneath there is 
like sticker letters that say brought to you by the PTA. Uh -huh. And those are all really happy. They're like on their last leg. So I would like to propose that somebody look into how much it would cost to like read it. Um, because we did. We did this oh. four years ago. We reached out to the same company that did it. And they were like, what are you talking about? We can sell you more letter board them letters, like for the yeah. actual board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had no replacement options for us for like the thing. So I think the best way to do it is just be to slowly peel all this off and then paint it. Yeah. And that's something we would have to redo probably hand over like painting. Yeah, like paint white on the inside of the yeah, okay, so I, this is not the poster. I'd like to. The marquee, right? That's what it's called. Yeah, they're on the, on the road. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll oh road. sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I would like to pass the buck to somebody else to do research. What are our options to make that um, look better, okay. functional? Like, it, right here, you can read it. It just looks kind of junky, but I imagine in another year or two, like, it's not going to. And it's also fine to not be there. Like it, all it says is like brought to you by the PTA. Mm -hmm. I'm also fine not having credit mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. But well, then we should take them off. So yeah. we should just go. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's maybe the best idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, just want to say that. there's a bush yeah. right next to that sign. Yeah. yeah. The one that died. The one that we bought for. <laughs> um, died this summer, and so we worked it with. Or I replaced it. I didn't ask anyone. Sorry. That's fine. For the Thank name. you. Yeah. And hopefully that will like more sun and heat. Perfect. And it will have red berries in the winter. It'll be pretty nice. Yeah. We managed to not let it get mowed down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was stopping at that dark plant sure. with a Nalgene bottle on my way to work every morning, and it still died. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't like cool sun. It was it's a, a very cool hot sun. spot. All right. The outdoor sign. Gotcha. Yeah. I was very confused by that. Any other things? All right, guys. Thank you. We're done. We will see you next month. Thanks, everyone. And did, did, we, did the card for Mr. Naji make its way around? Thank you.